Marxism and humanism, I would add, is assaulting our nation, stealing our children's minds, distorting human sexuality, redefining marriage, and has replaced the worship of God with the worship of things made by man's hands. But the worst impact that God himself rejects himself is when God rejects a nation who rejects the truth and therefore rejects him. At that point, the blessing on a nation turns into judgment on a nation. Essential. Truth, essential. Not a luxury. So in this segment, we're going to talk about the steps to restore a culture of truth, which I would submit in this country today, right now, we do not have a culture of truth. Gary, I want to start with you in the solution segment by asking you this question. Since a nation is made up of individuals who then form families, who then form communities, and then forms the nation, what would you outline as steps for individuals and families to take in regard to truth uh, as an effort to rebuilding what's important in the family and the personal life. So I know you're going to take us to the Word of God because that's the source of truth. So Gary, lay down a brief outline for us. Well, I just have my Bible open here to Psalm 119 and verse 30, and I didn't even give you a tweak, did I? Psalm 119 and verse 30 says, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I mentioned earlier in the last segment that truth is a choice. You either choose to go the way of truth or choose to reject the way of truth. And so it does start with that choice. And particularly in our Christian homes and families and churches, we need to make sure that the truth is that which prevails. And if you were to put this in a three-step process, I would say this. Number one, recognize the necessity of truth in every aspect of life, because without it, Anything goes and everything fails. Secondly, since truth is grounded in the scriptures and since it stems from God, we must get back to the scriptures always, remembering that Jesus said in John chapter 17 and verse 17, thy word is truth. And then thirdly, we must examine everything, everything, every thought, every attitude, every action, every uh, activity from the basis of biblical truth. If it's not according to biblical truth, we don't do it. If it's according to biblical truth, we do do it. And on every level of life, I think that's a pattern we need to follow. Well, I tell you, Gary, what you just laid out there was a wonderful outline. I couldn't write it all down, and I can't restate it briefly. So again, ladies and gentlemen, go to our website. We're done. Pick it up, and you can listen at your leisure and write down what uh, Gary just said about the steps for rebuilding truth into your personal life, your family's life, then ultimately into the nation's life. Now, Dave, let me go to you. Gary's a pastor of a church. What he laid out there is exactly how he would counsel his people and would counsel the congregation, and it's all biblical. It'll work. You're an evangelist. You are in many churches. You preach around the country, and you preach to many different people every week. What are you preaching about truth and how people should respond, and if they did, it would help to restore a culture of truth. Sam, basically what I'm trying to do is help people understand that truth is objective, not subjective. And let me explain what I mean by that. Humanism is that which dominates our culture. The basic definition, core definition of humanism is this. Man is the measure of all things. In other words, I as an individual, a man, I determine if something is true, if it's not if it's right, if it's wrong. But see, here's the problem with me being the determiner of what's right or wrong, truth or false. I am subject to mistakes because I'm human. So what if I'm wrong about my assessment of what's true and not true? So rather than making truth subjective, truth has to be objective. In other words, it has to be outside of me. Every person has to choose an objective source of truth. What I've chosen and what I've chosen to exalt is the Word of God as that objective source of truth. So as I'm preaching Sam around the country, what I'm trying to do is make much of the Word, make much of the Word of God, because it is, as Gary quoted uh, earlier, it is the source of truth. And boy, if we would go back to that, it would solve all of our problems. Hmm. So here again, ladies and gentlemen, truth is a standard. Truth is 
Jesus Christ. He says he is the truth, the way, the life. Truth is referred to as the Word of God. Gary said we've got to go back to the Bible. Everything about truth, orderliness, a predicted nature and outcome, confidence, all of those things that are related to unchanging, predictable outcomes in life, all stem from truth that is a standard, that is unchanging, that is absolute. We walk away from we're in trouble. Now, David, take us into the realm of civil government, if you could. There are steps that could be put into place that would help perhaps those who are in office, who would be in office, or voters who would consider at the time of voting who they will put in office. Connect that with truth and how embracing truth appropriately in those settings would make a difference. During the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin referred to a time when things were very difficult and they were having trouble. And he reminded the delegates that when they prayed to God for victory, when all things looked like it was going to fail during the Revolution, God gave them victory. George Washington, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson all believed that God gave America the victory in the Revolutionary War. And in Washington's farewell address, one of the most powerful documents in American history, And if we were to go back to the truths found in that document, America would be going on the right direction. He said this, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. Today, the secularists claim religion is the problem. George Washington believed religion was the answer. Wow, David knew. That's fantastic. Religion there is not just any religion denomination. It is the Christian no. religion. It yep. is the truth. And that is the yes. anchor point, ladies and gentlemen, here. 